In this video, I'm going to provide a quick run through of Factorial ANOVA using SPSS uh, version 25. And uh, this data set right here, we've got uh, two factors. We have instructional method uh, being factor one. It's got three levels. Uh, interest is factor two. This is an ordinal variable, one reflecting low interest, uh, two reflecting high interest. And then learning is my dependent measure. So we're going to be looking at uh, the main and interactive effects of instructional methods, student uh, level of interest, uh, and their interaction on learning. So uh, what we'll do is we're going to go into uh, an Analyze, go to General Linear Model and Univariate, and we'll put our independent variables in the Fixed Factors box, and then our dependent variable into the Dependent Variable box. Uh, next, we'll click on Options and click on descriptives, effect size, power, homogeneity tests, and uh, at this point let me just kind of note that in previous versions of SPSS uh, what you would have seen if you had gone under options you would not have seen uh, heteroscedasticity tests or parameter estimates with robust standard errors. So uh, that information would not have been included. Uh, instead above you would have seen uh, essentially a box where you would have gotten the uh, estimated marginal means or requested the estimated marginal means. That is actually now under a new tab in version 25. So uh, just that's just something to kind of pay attention to. So we'll click on continue and then EM means and we'll move uh, our, basically uh, our overall and our, our variables, uh, independent variables and their interaction over to the display means box. We'll click on continue uh, other options include post hocs. If uh, you know, we had basically three levels of instructional method. So we, if we wanted to do Tukey's post hocs, we can move that over to the post hoc test uh, box. Uh, interest only has two levels, so there's no need to do that. Uh, so we'll click on Tukey, and you'll notice that uh, unlike uh, the one-way ANOVA, you don't have the option for equal variances, not assumed test down here. Um, so uh, really your only option is to assume equal variances uh, when you're running post hocs uh, through this route. So we'll click on continue and uh, under plots, uh, let's say I want to plot out the interaction between the two. Um, what I can do is I can move, I'll move method over to the horizontal axis, interest over to the separate lines and click add. So typically the way I think about it is, is that um, the variable that I'm that's sort of my focal independent variable if you will uh, is a uh, instructional method that's kind of maybe perhaps of, of greatest theoretical interest and if I want to test what you know whether or not or evaluate whether or not the effects of instructional method on learning are moderated by level of student interest and uh, interest I, I might treat theoretically as my moderator variable so that's why I put it on the separate lines um, you know it could be that in another um, you know, someone else might uh, deem interest the focal independent variable and method being a moderator, but this is just how I'm conceptualizing uh, this particular analysis. So I'm going to click on continue and then on OK. And so now you'll see that we have uh, descriptive statistics with uh, the cell means uh, for, uh, you know, basically uh, method and interest. That's uh, essentially method one. Uh, low interest individuals, uh, there's a, the cell mean for that, L uh, interest, uh, excuse me, method one and high interest, there's the cell mean for that. We have uh, method two, low interest mean, method two, high interest mean, and so forth. So we have that, uh, we have essentially six cell means that we're referring to. And then we also have um, to look at, uh, you know, differences between uh, instructional method, the means for instructional method that's not conditional on interest and uh, means between interest that's not conditional on um, method. So anyway we'll talk a little bit more about that shortly but basically we'll scroll down and you'll notice that with version 25 you have Levine's test and you actually have four different versions of this test. The uh, older versions of SPSS, this is the version that they uh, utilize. So I'm gonna actually just going to focus on interpreting that. But all of these are interpreted basically the same way. And what we're doing in this case is we're uh, testing whether there are significant differences in the variances between uh, the cells, so or across the cells. So basically, if uh, this test is indicating statistical significance, that would be an indication 
of a potential violation of homogeneity of variance assumption. So in this case, you can see that our p-value is 0.132. If I adopt a standard or conventional alpha at 0.05, then I would infer that there are no differences among the cells in terms of the variances with respect to the learning variable. So for that reason, then I, I can just basically, I can feel a little more confidence in the trustworthiness of my analysis of variance, um, uh, the results in this table down here. So I'll scroll down and you can see that we have three different effects that are being represented. So we have the effect for method, we have the effect for interest, and then we also have the interaction between the two. So when we're looking at uh, the effect of a given independent variable and not considering how that effect might be conditioned at different levels of uh, the moderator or, or uh, the second independent variable, then we, we, ref we refer to that as a main effect. So in this case, we're looking at the effective method irrespective of where people fall in terms of their interests. So the main effect for method, we're, we're using this, this row right here to test that out. And so you can see that um, we have a main effect that's statistically significant for instructional method, meaning that um, that uh, we, we would infer that there are significant mean differences in learning across the three instructional groups. You also see that um, for interest, when we test the main effect for that variable, we see that there is no significance. So that's going to be indicating that there's no significant main effect for interest um, in, so, um, in this particular analysis. Then last we have the test for the interaction effect and so you can see the interaction effect, it's a little hard to see now because I've dr uh, drawn over it, but the p-value was 0 .006 and that's indicating that there's a significant interaction effect. So in other words what that's telling us is that the effect of method on the dependent variable learning is conditional on uh, level of interest. Um, so in this particular case, we have that statistically significant interaction effect. Looking at the uh, column for partial eta squared, uh, these are just basically uh, effect size indices, and uh, you would uh, you would interpret uh, these in light of uh, your field of study. You know what's conventionally uh, deemed as uh, small, medium, or large in your field of study, uh, or you could refer to Cohen standards uh, for judging effect size. Uh, he suggested values about 0 0.01 uh, reflecting a small effect, 0 0.06 for medium, 0 0.14 for large. Uh, just keep in mind that he's focusing on uh, uh, social and behavioral sciences, and so this may not be uh, applicable standards for uh, your given area. It just depends on uh, what, you know, what kind of field that you're working in. So at any rate, if I use these general uh, conventions and we would say that the main effect for method is significant uh, was uh, large the main effect for interest was uh, you know quite small and then the main the uh, interaction effect between method and interest would be uh, deemed uh, large as well and in this particular case because the interaction effect is uh, statistically significant that that tells us that it's not just method that's of interest but it's how you know it's it's that the effect of method is actually varying across levels of the interest variable and so that can take on uh, considerable um, importance. So as we scroll down you can see that we get estimated marginal means um, you know the grand mean, uh, means for method, interest and uh, the cell means. We're going to scroll down a little bit further you can see that we have a table for our multiple comparisons comparing the means um, between the method uh, groups uh, so you can see that you know method one had a higher uh, mean than method two. That difference was statistically significant. There's the p-value right there. One versus three, uh, there was a significant difference, and then two versus three, uh, no difference. Um, now, as we scroll down, we can see that uh, we have our profile plot, and so now you can see that we have uh, in blue this is the low interest group, in red this is the high interest group. So you can see that uh, in using uh, method one, instructional method one, uh, you know, the, the low interest students exhibited less learning, it looks like, than those who are higher interest. In method two, you sort of see this crossover, uh, but there's no real, you know, difference between the two groups. And in method three, it looks like that the uh, high interest uh, group 
uh, performed uh, considerably worse, perhaps, than the low interest group. Now, let me just kind of say that this is made up data, so it doesn't necessarily have to fit with any kind of theoretical exp expectations, but that's just sort of a, a breakdown uh, visually. Now, the, the downside of using profile plots is, is that, um, you know, it only gives us sort of a visual indication of, of the nature of the interaction. We might be interested in testing whether, say, for instance, this difference right here, this difference right here, and this difference right here were statistically significant. And so this is where we can utilize simple effects tests to, to test the differences in means, um, you know, between the two interest groups at each level of the method factor. So if we want to do that, what we can do is go back to um, our main menu, go back under univariate and click on paste. And this is the, uh, this is the syntax that we, we've es essentially uh, specified through the menu options. And we'll go to the e-means table line right here where it says method by interest. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the compare function. I'm going to type in compare. And then inside a parenthesis, I'm going to type in um, uh, the uh, variable where I want to compare groups. So I want to compare, let's say, the high and low interest groups uh, at each level of instructional method. So what I'll do is I'll type in interest here. And so then I will basically get three uh, simple effects tests comparing the mean differences between the high and low groups uh, in method one, method two, and method three. If I want to adjust uh, those uh, tests, for um, the fact that we're carrying out multiple tests and I want set to utilize a Bonferroni adjustment, I can type in AG, ADJ. Inside the parenthesis, I'll type in Bonferroni and in parenthesis. So now when I highlight all of this and click on the green arrow, I can scroll down. All of, Everything else is exactly the same, but now I get the pairwise comparisons and you can see we have method one, method two, and method three and we have a comparison between the low and the high interest group right here uh, so that's the difference in means between those two groups and you can see that that was there was a significant difference between the low and the high interest groups basically if I take the mean for the low group subtract the mean for the high group you, you get a difference of uh, 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 2.4 where basically those in the uh, low interest group scored 2.4 points lower on average than those in the high interest group and that's only within method one. Within method two, you can see that there's no difference between the low and the high group. So there's the, uh, the p-value. And then for method three, you see that uh, method one, actually uh, individuals in that group scored about 3.2 points higher on average than those in, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, the low interest group scored about 3.2 points higher on average than those in the high interest group within method three. And that difference is statistically significant. So um, I could also look at this in a different way if I wanted to. If I go back uh, and uh, let's just say I'm going to go back to my syntax right here. And let's say that instead of using interest uh, to compare, let's say I want to compare on method. So I'll type in method and leave everything else exactly the same. So in this case, what's going to happen is I'll compare the different um, uh, differences between instructional method for those individuals who are low versus high in interest. So if I highlight this and run it, scroll down, you can see that now we have those pairwise comparisons here. And so you can see that this is a low interest group, this is a high group. So if I compare students in method one versus method two, there's a significant difference uh, basically favoring method two um, for uh, those in, uh, in uh, method when I compare basically methods one versus three, you can see that in this particular case, um, that um, you know, if I take the mean for method one, subtract the mean for method three, you can see that there's a, a negative value indicating that the students that were in method three scored higher than those in method one, and there's my p-value indicating significant difference. If I compare uh, those in method two versus three, then there's no difference right here. Among the highs right here, in uh, uh, high interest group, you can see that when we can make the comparison between uh, all three methods, so there's method one versus two, no difference, one versus three, no difference, and then two versus three, there's no difference. So where we see the differences in uh, the uh, the effectiveness of instructional methods, those d the differences uh, largest um, are, are most apparent among the low interest students.